My name is Eileen Martin, and what the JEDI Committee means to me is a group that's working to help make sure all of SEG's members can get the most out of being part of this organization. It means we're sort of all included as ourselves, and we're not encountering any unnecessary barriers to you know, participating in all the great stuff that SEG does. Welcome to SEG's Seismic Sound Off, conversations addressing the challenges of energy, water, and climate. I'm your host, Andrew Gary. In this episode, Dr. Eileen Martin, winner of the 2024 J. Clarence Karcher Award, shares actionable advice and resources to help you make a positive impact in your professional environment. In this conversation, we talk about the challenges and opportunities of a volunteer-driven organization the definitions of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion in the context of geophysics, how to actively support colleagues from underrepresented backgrounds, practical ways to foster inclusion and belonging in professional settings, and the importance of recognizing and nominating diverse talent for awards. This is not simply a conversation about diversity and inclusion across organizations, but also how to maximize effectiveness and create powerful teams. Please check the show notes for the links to the Geoscientists Around the Globe series in the TLE and information on how to connect with the JEDI Committee. And now, here is my conversation with Eileen Martin. And in some ways, what prompted this conversation is a recent article in The Leading Edge in this series called Geoscientists Around the Globe, which has been going on for a while now. And in these articles, it says that the JEDI Committee focuses on justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. How does the committee itself define each of these terms within the context of geophysics? Yeah, I think many people are probably familiar with terms like diversity and inclusion. They get used very frequently, but maybe it's useful to kind of go through those individual definitions. So When we talk about justice, this isn't specifically talking about things like the justice system, getting justice, any of that sort of connotation. What we actually are talking about is justice in the context of removing any previous barriers to allow members to fully participate in activities. And when we talk about equity, this is talking about equal access to resources and opportunities. When we're talking about diversity, we're talking about valuing all voices equally. And that means voices that may be very different, especially in an organization like SEG that's very global and that has people with all kinds of interests and all kinds of career paths. When we're talking about inclusion, we want to make sure that SEG cultivates this sort of sense of belonging so that everybody can thrive. Yeah, geophysics is so fascinating to me because it it is a global discipline. It's wide ranging. And I think some people might think especially maybe now, you know, that, that the geophysicists are, are toiling on a computer. But I mean, you're talking field work, you're talking lab work, you're talking, like, it could be a very physical discipline. So providing access and equal access to all of those individuals could certainly be a very difficult task. So in that respect, what do you feel, or not feel, but what is the JEDI Committee's mission statement? And, and how do you find that it guides the activities that it does? So, Basically, the JEDI Committee advises the SEG Board of Directors on setting and maintaining justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion goals on strategies and implementation activities for the society and its various components, its members, and elsewhere within its reach in and across the world of applied geophysics. And so we know that there are many activities within SEG already that we're trying to support, but we're really trying to take this from a framework where we can say, What are the big picture structures across all of SEG? How do we support those great things that are already going on? How do we help activities that people are already putting effort into to sort of better meet these goals of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion for all of our members? And then also where are kind of those sort of weaknesses or places where we can grow some more? In general, we tend to focus more on policies and procedures and programs that can be implemented across that SEG scale where we have these very complex diversity issues that come up, but we also need to sort of set that up in a way that works for SEG as a sort of volunteer or member-run organization. And so that's very different than 
Maybe if you look at another geoscience organization like AGU, for instance, the American Geophysical Union, they have a very large, very large professional staff focused on diversity and inclusion issues. And with SEG, it's really driven by geophysicists. And we're so we're trying to make sure that in all these different efforts that are led by geophysicists, by volunteers, that we're able to have a little bit more of a grassroots effort in how we kind of implement things. Yeah, that all volunteer aspect makes your work probably a little more difficult in some respects, but there is something lovely that it's being driven by geophysicists and people very intimately equated with the issues faced by the various members and people across. So let's let's get into the Jedi Ambassadors program and, and any other programs and initiatives that are going on currently that you would like to highlight. Yeah, yeah. So I think Jedi Ambassadors is something that I'm really excited about because it basically... The idea is that we have many different committees. They operate in such different ways, and they're all trying to tackle different challenges, whether it's membership or student programs or even things like oversight and audits. Like some of these things are quite different. There's, you know, the research committee. Each of those has their own sort of ways of operating, their own ways of recruiting new members, and their own ways of sort of like serving the membership of all of SEG. So we don't want to come in as the Jedi Committee where we only have our members and our experiences on the committees that we've been on to inform our policies. Instead, we want to be able to say, as we develop policies to help out SEG committees with better serving the entire society, we want to make sure that that's actually going to operate in ways that make sense with how these different committees operate. So when we have these Jedi ambassadors, the idea is to have one or two people on each of these different committees that basically form a support network across many different committees to talk about how do we sort of set up best practices? How does this make sense with how these different committees operate? And what are some specifics within my committee that I can do to kind of improve our ability to support all of the SEG members? And so there's some some support network across different committees, some brainstorming, some ability to discuss how do we need to be flexible with what these policies are that we may come up with in the future. Along the way, uh, one of the first activities for these Jedi ambassadors is going through a training on Jedi principles. And this training is like four sessions. It really focuses on being able to have people that are part of that training get to know each other as people, as scientists, as you know, colleagues, co-volunteers, like all these different aspects. And so it's not the same as maybe like if I show up to a diversity training at my job that's mandated when I show up, it's going to very much be one-way transfer of information for the most part. This is very much about discussion-based. What is how it has been our experience in SEG and in our careers and our educations? And how do we kind of build forward from there? If you were members of, of, let's just say, the research committee and you were interested in being a Jedi ambassador, could you, and maybe this isn't the pilot program, but in the future, how you see this program going, would a member of the research committee could just reach out to the Jedi committee and say they want to do this? Do you have to be a member of the Jedi committee as well to be an ambassador at another one of the SEG committees? No, we're actually hoping that the group of ambassadors actually becomes much larger than the Jedi committee itself. That helps to make sure that nobody is getting burdened with, oh, I'm the Jedi person. I got to do everything. I got to be on this committee and that committee. Instead, it's you're just part of your committee. You get some extra support You by reaching out to us on the Jedi committee. We get you through the training. We have some check-ins. You become a point of contact where you know, if your committee needs support, you're going to come talk to us and we're going to be able to have that connection already and that starting point of shared knowledge to be able to start supporting you really well. Yeah, I I like that uh, support network. That sounds very helpful. And one of the ways that this the Leading Edge series is is set up is it's an interview. So there, there's question and answers. You you provide the questions and, and some of the interviews and, and other members of the committee. And one of the interviewees, they really emphasize the value of questioning their own biases and actively supporting colleagues from underrepresented backgrounds. How does the Jedi Committee encourage those types of actions among the SEG members and, and this broader global geophysics community? Yeah, I think one of the best ways to start questioning what our biases are, sometimes we don't even know that we have these, right? 
So of course, you know, participating in things like the Jedi Ambassadors training, we talk about what are those biases. And so we try to get more and more people to kind of be thinking about how do those maybe come up? What are what are biases I might not have even been realizing I, I had or who's not in the room with me for me to even think about that? Even just being able to talk openly about what are these different diversity and inclusion issues and to hear from people about their experiences really helps us to sort of start thinking about what might have been the ways that I thought about this person before hearing a little bit more in depth about their experience as a geophysicist and as a person. And so when we're doing the geoscientists around the globe interviews, we're really hoping to just sort of like elevate some of those voices, let people hear in a little more depth about people's experience. If you just say hi to somebody in a workshop and you maybe you only talk about I don't know, some new method for vertical seismic profiling, something like that. Um, or if I go and I just talk to somebody about, you know, distributed acoustic sensing, I'm going to connect with them on this very specific thing. But you always wonder about what are other aspects of this person's life, this person's career perspective? Are there other ways we could connect? And so we hope that these sort of geoscientists around the globe get a little bit deeper in that way. We also do things like this past year at the image meeting. There's this area called the Gathering Place. We're going to do it again this year. And it's not just a Jedi committee. There's also the Women's Network Committee has volunteers for this. There's overall for the image meeting, there's a committee of folks that are, are making sure that that particular meeting is particularly inclusive for everyone. And our committee is part of that as well. And we have all these activities and a lot of them are sort of guided towards how do we have people hear from more other people about their experiences? So for instance, this last year, we had one where you could just drop by for like two minutes and you fill out a little sign that says, I am blank, but I am not blank. And it's all about how do you challenge your perceptions about people when you think about yourself? Maybe it's like, like for you, maybe you're like, I'm from Indiana, but I don't watch NASCAR. <laughs> I don't know. Um, like it can be silly stuff like that. Sometimes it's it gets a little bit deeper depending on what people feel comfortable sharing. And it's it's really up to each person what they want to share. And um, those are really fun to look at, to read, and to realize these are your colleagues across SEG. These are other geophysicists. And um, you know, this this kind of gives you a picture of many people's experiences really quickly in a sort of low effort and fun way. You know, speaking of that, you know, so that's a really nice icebreaker. And that's a really nice thing for someone just to kind of do themselves to to understand, start to kind of think to themselves and understand, oh, I'm I am this and, and not this, though other people may perceive differently or, or whatever that might be. Are there other ways if someone's listening and they they want to start having these deeper conversations at their workplace or simply just getting to know a colleague better, but coming at it from an understandable and empathetic level? to have these conversations and start moving more in this direction uh, at their work. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the easiest things that we've been trying to push for, and I know that several committees have started to adopt this practice as well, is having Jedi moments at the beginning of your meetings. And some workplaces, people might feel uncomfortable about bringing up diversity and inclusion, just even the language around justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. That's not the case at all workplaces, and hopefully people can always feel comfortable to express themselves. But even if someone is in one of those situations, you can still just couch it as an icebreaker. And so we've actually created a big list of a bunch of different Jedi moment ideas that we're trying to share. We've got those social media sh channels to share some of those. And they're really like, they're just kind of fun things. I think uh, one that I heard recently was, if you had to describe your family as a meal, what would that meal be? And it kind of helps you to like find out a little bit more about people. Or one time we started off a meeting with, think about part of your name or your nickname. What's the story of that? And you know, some people would talk about, oh, in this context with my friends, they call me this, but my family calls me this or my coworkers call me this. And so it gets into getting to know people a little bit more. And with those little sort of activities where people can choose, like how much do they want to engage with that? What do they feel comfortable with sharing about themselves? It sort of eases you into those conversations where maybe you do get a bit deeper. And so you can kind of build up some of those relationships, even with people that you previously might not have had the chance to connect with too much. 
in a way that's got a little bit of structure and can kind of build up over time. Yeah, I, I always have personally gravitated towards structure, especially in, in meetings. And it's just kind of nice that kind of supports creating belonging in a team, which is a, a huge parameter if it's going to be a successful team. So it's nice to be able to put these things that make people feel like they belong and more understood, but also are benefiting the whole purpose and goals of that group. That's a pretty neat one-two combination there. Yeah, and it doesn't force you to like jump into some sort of really difficult conversation right away, right? Yeah, and and on that, I I imagine, you know, you kind of mentioned there there might be some people that well, I'll just say bristle maybe at, at the idea of, of creating these Jedi moments or just even talking about this particular issue. What do you what have you found in working on this some common misconceptions people have when when you yourself are talking about growing these Jedi practices? Yeah, I think one common misconception that I've heard is Sometimes people will worry about, are the people who are prioritizing spending time on Jedi issues, are they really focused on the science? And from getting to know the committee that we have, we have multiple people on the committee who have national and international awards, who are you know, leaders in their companies. It's really a, an impressive group of people. I'm sometimes intimidated with them a little bit. But they really do take the science seriously. And that means that the view is very much about how do we make sure that we're all able to enjoy, you know, the great stuff that's going on in geophysics? How are we all able to build our careers forward? How are we all able to push forward the state of the art in the science when we think about, you know, how do we make sure that all kinds of people are not maybe getting drained by feeling like an outsider? You know, that takes a lot of energy just day to day to show up at your workplace if you don't feel included. And so how do we make sure that those people are, are really able to do their job, do it well, and even to excel? A two-part question here on on getting resources and, and learnings. So how could SEG members get involved in this committee? And if someone is just wanting to learn more about Jedi practices, especially if it's geared towards the geoscience professionals, what would you recommend? Yeah, yeah. So one thing you can do is actually this fall, we'll be going through our first rotation of a few members. We have a time period that people are members. And so we will be recruiting a couple of new members. And in particular, I really want to encourage people that are not in North America to be able to get in touch with us about potentially joining the committee. And you don't have to say right away, I want to join this committee you can get in touch with us and we'll just have a committee member talk to you about what's the committee like, find out about it, especially with a new committee. There's this opportunity to kind of recruit all kinds of people and to be very open with our recruiting standards from the beginning. It's not just us tapping our friend on the shoulder and saying like, hey, do you want to do this committee with me? And so we really want to make sure that, you know, we're getting people from all over the world in this committee. Another thing you can do is... Um, for the leading edge, send us a note if there's somebody that you think we should interview and highlight in that. So that's another way to get involved. This summer, we're starting to talk more about how do we actually engage more directly with our SEG student chapters at universities? How do we provide support for them, especially if there are student activities going on in those chapters that are particularly aligned with sort of promoting that culture of inclusion and, and Jedi principles within their organizations. So reach out to us if you're if you're part of one of those student chapter leadership or you know faculty mentor for those student chapters. Also drop by the gathering place at the image meeting. The probably the the lowest effort and fastest way to connect with us is just drop by. We'll have some fun activities. We'll probably have some like candy or freebies. Um, and also you can just like talk to us about what is the committee. And if you're also on another committee and you're starting to think about, you know, are there things that the Jedi committee could do to support my committee or to, to partner on an effort, then you can, you can talk to us there and we'll start, start a conversation about how we can support you. And also whether anybody in your committee might be interested in being part of that Jedi ambassadors program. Well, you mentioned earlier how you're working with people that have awards and, and honors, and it can be a, a little intimidating, but you yourself are now part of that group, having recently been 
nominated and and given the the honor of the Jay Clarence Karcher Award yourself this year. What did it mean for you to to hear that you were receiving that award? Yeah, it it really meant a lot. I think that for me, I'm coming from a background where I started in math and physics and then got into computational science and then sort of found my way into geophysics. So many of us in the SEG community have these sort of like very interdisciplinary backgrounds. And it can be tough to even put a label on yourself of like, what kind of scientist am I? Am I, am I a geophysicist? Am I a mathematician? I don't know. And for me, like being able to get that Karcher Award makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with like using that label of, yeah, I, I am a geophysicist, I guess. I really like this, this SEG community and I have for a long time. And so to get that, that kind of recognition from this community that I've, I've gotten so much from is just an incredibly meaningful experience. One thing, though, that was a little bit bittersweet when I got the award, I had, you know, I had been kind of aware of this already a little bit, that it seemed like there, there weren't a lot of women that were winning some of these awards. And so this is something that, you know, I, I should probably bring up that over the last five years, only 6.3% of our, our winners of the Karcher Award have been women. And, and that's, that 6.3% is literally just me. And if we look at the entire almost 30 year history of the award, it's 6.8% is the average. So it's actually the past five years have been worse than the entire history of the award. And so this really does bring to mind this, you know, this reminder that we need to keep advocating for, you know, all sorts of diversity among our award winners. Gender is one thing that's easy for me to you know, look up the citations of what pronouns people are using to tell, you know, what are people's genders, but there are many different aspects of diversity. And so hopefully, you know, as people are kind of keeping that in mind that, you know, we were sort of making some improvements and then all of a sudden kind of a drop. If there's anybody that you know of who you think might be deserving of an award, don't hold off. Get in touch with the Jedi Committee, get in touch with the Women's Network Committee. And these are organizations that can help you to learn about these processes for soliciting uh, letters of support for these awards. And hopefully we can do a better job with our nominations in the future. Well, thanks for doing that work to, to bring that to this conversation. And, you know, the Jedi Committee hopefully will be able to make some progress in that area if, if it's simply just to highlight this issue and make it more aware and get more females and, and women identifying people to submit for awards and, and put their name in the ring. Yeah. And not just women, all kinds of diversity are things that like we've provided letters of support in the past for other scientists from underrepresented groups as people have gone through nominations. And we're happy to continue doing that in the future. That itself kind of felt like a challenge. Is there any additional challenge you would like to leave the listener from this conversation? Yeah, yeah. So like that's a challenge that let's say people in certain jobs like or with more seniority they can kind of take on that challenge. It's really hard when you're maybe still a student, you're like, oh, who could I nominate for an award? And But something that all of us can do is to think about, you know, is there any SEG related space? And maybe that's just your department at your school, or maybe it's actually at a meeting, maybe it's in a committee, uh, whatever that SEG related space is, where you feel sort of comfortable or included, or maybe where you're actually a volunteer or the person who's leading some kind of activity. So my challenge would be think about that space and think about if you were a totally brand new student in that area, what's one thing that might make you feel more welcome? And do that thing. If you're if you're the person that's leading an activity, that might mean maybe just taking a couple extra minutes to make sure that everybody gets to introduce themselves or is actively encouraged to introduce themselves. Sometimes we as scientists can be a little bit shy. Like we were talking about earlier, those, just like having a little bit of structure to start those conversations can make people feel so much more included. Maybe it's just turning to the person next to you when there's a break at a, a conference or a workshop and introducing yourself, even though you don't know each other. That's such an actionable challenge. I remember my time working in Washington, D.C., and we'd have to, I remember stopping myself to make sure I'm not using an acronym that maybe not everyone recognizes because it's just so easy when you're intimately equated to start rattling things, but can be very exclusive when, when people don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 
The last question here, if you had to describe your journey in one word, Eileen, what would it be and why? This was actually one that I, I made some notes and I literally marked this one as I'm not sure. Um, but I think that if I had to say a common theme throughout my journey is almost always change. And I hope that that never stops. Mm. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Just kind of last general, is there any question I should have asked that I did not? No, I think we hit on all the big stuff. If you think of something down the road, feel free to get in touch. And um, yeah, thanks for highlighting the Jedi Committee. Yeah, it's, it's, it's my honor. It's, it's nice to, to bring these conversations to the forefront. I really like the actionable advice you gave, very easy things that people can start to implement. Uh, that's really just about creating good groups and good working environments. So thank you for that. I'll look for that email with those resources that I'll include in the, in the episode show notes, along with your bio. Is there anything else before I let you go to the rest of your morning? No, I think that's it. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to this episode of Seismic Sound Off. SEG creates these episodes to celebrate and inspire the geophysicists of today and tomorrow. Visit seg.org to learn more. Email the show at podcast at seg.org. This episode was hosted, edited, and produced by me, Andrew Gary, at Treasure Mint. The SEG podcast team is Jennifer Cobb, Kathy Gamble, and Allie McGinnis. The podcast will return next week with a new episode. Until then, this is Seismic Sound Off, signaling off.